Hey, how's it going everybody? Tim here, the frugal travel guru, back with another video. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about traveling on the Greyhound bus alone. Now, I know if you are planning a trip on Greyhound and you're having to go by yourself because you can't find anyone to go with you, you're probably a little nervous. I totally get this, I understand it. When I made my first solo Greyhound bus trip, I think it was like 10 years ago almost, I, I was super nervous super scared i just i just you know being in an unfamiliar environment with all these different people uh you know going you know far away from home i was very nervous i'd heard all these these horror stories about greyhound i just did not know what to expect so i wanted to make today's video and talk about some tips that i think will help you um, if you're traveling alone on the greyhound bus but before we get into the tips let me just say you will be okay uh, you can travel on Greyhound by yourself. You will be okay. Thousands of people do it every day. They make it to their destination and they're fine. You'll be fine too. Just want to get that out there. Maybe ease some of that nervousness you got going on. Now let's jump into these tips. So tip number one is that I recommend you tell someone that you're going on your bus trip. Okay, let someone know when you're leaving, let someone know when you should arrive at your destination um, and have that person check in with you, not only at the beginning and the end of your trip, but also throughout your trip. Just let someone know that you're going on this trip so that if, you know, in the unlikely event that something does happen, there will be someone who can get in touch with like Greyhound and find out like where you're at or, or what's going on or who will try to contact you and, and, and get an update. So just let someone know that you actually are going on this trip alone. Tip number two uh, is don't draw attention to yourself. I've mentioned this in several other videos. Greyhound is not the, the time and the place to dress up, have all your, your best outfit on, your nicest jewelry, you know, you have your face made all up. Greyhound is not the place to draw attention to yourself. The less attention you draw to yourself, the easier your trip will be. Trust me on this one. I've ridden the Greyhound many, many times and I've just seen the people who, you know, there are some crazy people on Greyhound. You know, the, 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 no, there will be some crazy people on your trip. What you want to do is fall under their radar. Um, so the less attention you draw to yourself, the less likely you are that you will have um, some of the people that can make your trip, uh, you know, a nightmare to, you know, come towards you. So just dress down, dress comfortable, dress casual, um, just try to blend in with the crowd uh, and you'll be fine. Tip number three, if possible, especially if you are on a longer trip, try and find like a travel buddy um try and find someone who's traveling close to where you're going um you know or in the same general direction as you uh, maybe they're going a little further than you whatever try to find a travel buddy someone that you can build up a trust with uh, and who you can just a sit by if possible talk to um you know during layovers maybe when you want to go to the bathroom or get something to eat or whatever they can watch your luggage you can do the same for them uh you know kind of be careful choosing your travel buddy because there's some slick talkers out there uh, and they may be the main person trying to get you um so be careful uh, i recommend like elderly people okay um if you can find like an elderly person uh who can be your travel buddy not only will, can they help you out but you can do a lot more for helping them out um if, if, if someone's elderly they're traveling on greyhound they probably need your help more than you need theirs but they can also watch your back watch your possessions things like that not to mention an old person can't like grab your luggage and run away <laughs> old person can't really rob you so that so that's another plus um for having an older travel buddy but just try to find someone you can travel with watch each other's back um a lot of times with me this just happens organically i've traveled greyhound alone enough like i'm i'm cool i don't care but a lot of times i'll just like sit next to somebody and we'll start talking and before you know it we just kind of like link up for the rest of our time together Tip number four, um, and this is especially doing breaks, things like that, stay with the crowd, okay? Um, bus stop somewhere for you to get something to eat. Don't go wandering off way down the street. Um, stay with the people on your bus, where they're going, things like that. It's just safer. Because like I mentioned in the beginning, you are in new surroundings, new cities, new towns, new areas. You don't know uh, what's the good part of town, the bad part of town, what's right around that corner. If you stay with the crowd, you stay with the people you're riding the bus with, they can look out for you and people are far less likely to do anything to you if you're around a crowd of people so when you have breaks things like that stay with the people on the bus be a lot safer tip number five 
keep your eye on your luggage at all times. One of the biggest complaints on Greyhound is that people's luggage get lost, gets lost. Um, and while it's not as a big a deal as like bodily harm, it is still, still a big deal. Um, a lot of times when you're traveling on Greyhound, you, a lot of people are moving, um, they're going on important trips, uh, you need your luggage. Very rare someone can lose their luggage and be like, eh. So <laughs> you definitely need to keep your eye on your luggage on the Greyhound bus because it can, you know, uh, either get loaded on the wrong bus, get left at a station, or someone could steal it. Let's be honest. Um, so whenever your luggage is with you in your possession, keep an eye on it. I can't tell you how many times I see people put sit down in a station and walk over to like the water fountain, walk to the bathroom, walk to get something to eat, walk to the vending machine, and have their back to the luggage. Anyone could just walk up, take your bags, and leave. It happens. Um, real quick, cell phones as well. When you're charging your cell phone at the station, at the charging bank, don't leave your phone there and walk away. Someone will steal it, I'm telling you. So just keep your eye on your luggage, keep it with you at all times. Even when you're on the bus, your checked bag will be under the bus so you don't have to worry about it. Just make sure, if possible, you see it get put on the right bus, okay? Uh, sometimes the luggage attendants make a mistake, uh, so just whenever possible, make sure you see the bag put, on, put under the bus. But as far as like your carry-on bags, this is kind of up to you. Even I will admit, I don't, I don't always do this. Uh, I, I travel with a carry-on backpack typically. Sometimes when the bus stops for food breaks or bathroom breaks, I'll, I'll take the backpack down from the overhead bin, put it on my back before I go in the store or whatever. Sometimes I don't. It kind of depends on where we're at and who's, and honestly, who's on the bus with me. If I'm on the bus with a pretty chill crowd, I'm not worried about anybody, I'll leave my carry-on on the bus sometimes. Sometimes I take it off with me. Uh, you know, as, as the frugal travel guru, my advice to you um, is going to be to take it with you at all times, but you know, I've never thus far, knock on wood, had anyone steal my, my carry-on bag from the overhead bin, but just realize, depending on what you have in it, if you have your valuables, um, some uh, expensive electronics, you might want to take your carry-on bag with you everywhere just to make sure no one steals it. Tip number six, uh, and this is one I see a lot of people uh, uh, not follow. Know your itinerary. When you purchase your ticket, it will, it will show you, uh, for the most part, your whole itinerary, especially all the layovers and transfers and major stops that you have. Um, Greyhound stops at a lot of little small podunk hole in the wall towns, so it won't show you all of those, but it will show you like the major stops along your route. Just know those, because it's good to know. Uh, for one thing, you don't want to be like sleep on the bus and, and your bus is gonna, you know, your stop is coming up in an hour and you think you still have like five, six hours left or whatever. You know, it's, it's good to know where the bus is gonna be stopping. It's good to know where you have layovers and transfers, especially the transfers. Um, it's good to know where as well as when your transfer is scheduled to take place. A lot of times Greyhound runs behind schedule, okay? So you're, uh, you may be scheduled to come into Atlanta and then leave at 2 p.m. on another bus. Um, that The bus you're on might not get to Atlanta till 3 p.m. So that means the bus you were scheduled to leave on is probably already gone. If you're not paying attention to your itinerary, you won't know this. You'll pull into Atlanta thinking it's all fine and dandy. You'll get off, go, you know, whatever, stretch your legs, use the bathroom. Then eventually you'll be like, all right, when do I, uh, when's my next bus leave? And they'll be like, oh, that bus left an hour and a half ago. Uh, then you have, you know, the, the issue of getting a, t a new ticket reprinted and, you know, when figure out when the next bus is coming. If you pay attention to your itinerary, and you know that you've already missed your bus. You know, like this happens to me a lot on Greyhound, sadly. I know when I get to Atlanta at 3 p.m., first thing I need to do is run to the service desk, uh, get my new ticket, uh, get a new ticket printed for the next bus coming. In fact, me, I pay such close attention to my itinerary that I will have already on the uh, Greyhound mobile app, I will have already pulled up when the next bus is leaving. Like I'll get on there and I'll start, uh, I'll go to the book a ticket feature and see when the next uh, bus is leaving from Atlanta that has tickets. So when I get to the ticket counter, I'm like, yeah, I need a ticket on the 415 bus to so-and-so. Like I'm, I'm that in depth with it. You don't have to be that in depth with it, but uh, at least know your itinerary, know where you're going, when you're supposed to be there, when your other buses are supposed to leave. I've seen people just clueless in a Greyhound bus station and they end up being there for like 18 hours because they have to wait for a bus coming tomorrow. You don't want that to happen. So know your itinerary. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Number seven, uh, this is kind of common sense, but I'm learning in life that common sense is a myth. Uh, so be careful who you talk to. It can be very uh, tempting to whoever sit next, sits next to you. You got this long bus trip to just open up and spill your guts. Um, they'll be telling you all kinds of stories. You want to tell your stories. First and foremost, a lot of people in life in general lie. So a lot of the stories these people are telling you probably are not true. I would say 60% of the stories you hear on Greyhound are people just making stuff up. That's part of the fun of traveling. You can be whoever you want to be. So these people start telling you their life story. Doesn't mean you need to tell them your life story. Um, especially be careful about, you know, real personal private information, um, as well as don't always have to tell people where you're going. That's like the main question people ask, where are you going? Uh, you never know. Someone might want to get off at the same destination as you and, and try to follow you home or something crazy. So me personally, depending on who the person is, sometimes I, I try to never lie, but Sometimes the wrong destination might just happen to slip out because I don't trust the person sitting next to me. Um, so just be careful who you talk to. Like I said, there's crazy people on the Greyhound bus. They will try to come up, start conversations, all kinds of stuff. It is okay to be rude and just ignore someone, not talk to them. Never let someone borrow your cell phone. That's another big one on Greyhound. People want to borrow your phone. Uh, in this day and age, who does not have a phone? The government will give you a phone. So if somebody does not have a phone and they need to borrow yours, that's a red flag. Don't let people borrow your phone. Don't just be talking to people willy-nilly. Put your earbuds in, listen to the music. Uh, it's, I'm telling you, it's safer because there's some crazies out there. Not, not, not a lot, but there, there are some out there and they tend to love Graham. So just be careful who you talk to and what information you share. Tip number eight. Um, you're going to be tired, especially if you have a long Greyhound bus trip. I recommend sleeping on the bus. I think that's the safest place. Uh, I see a lot of people sleeping at the Greyhound bus stations. Um, and I've seen people miss their bus because they overslept. Um, I've seen people come around and like be scoping out people's luggage while they're sleeping. Uh, just all kinds of bad things can happen if you're sleeping in a Greyhound bus station just on some random bench, you know? So I recommend sleeping on the bus really the only bad thing that can happen to you if you're sleeping on the bus is if the person next to you you know starts messing with you or something you're going to realize that pretty quick and wake up um and then you just yell the bus driver will help you out the people around you but i don't think i've ever seen that happen on my many many trips on greyhound um unless someone's just totally out of their mind they're not gonna mess with you on the bus because there's too many witnesses uh so if you have to sleep sleep on the bus I know for some people this is super easy. As soon as I get on the bus, they're out. Other people like me, it's harder to do, but I try to make myself like stay awake and you know drink like an energy drink and stuff like that when I'm in the station. That way when I get on the bus, I'm tired. Um, and also another reason why you need to know your itinerary. Um, when you know you have a long stretch on the bus, try to get some sleep. Um, Sometimes you can't help it. I've slept in stations before myself. Uh, I was just so exhausted, had long layovers. There was nothing else to do. But whenever possible, try to sleep on the bus so that you're alert at the station. So no harm comes to you when you're knocked out on a bench in the Denver Greyhound bus station at two in the morning. Okay, moving on. Tip number nine. Uh, one of the another tip I mentioned in almost all my videos: sit near the front of the bus. I don't know why, but but the crazies and the thugs and the and the and the and the, and the people that you know just just all the drama people always go to the back of the bus. I, I think it's just that natural instinct to want to be as far away from authority as possible. The bus driver is the only authority on the bus. They want to be as far away from her or him as possible. They go to the back of the bus and then kind of work their way to the middle if they have to. Me, I plop down in the first seat available. I, I kind of skip the first row or two because it's for like elderly people if possible but at third row you know third fourth fifth row fair game i try to sit close to the front of the bus as possible a lot less drama a lot less activity if something does go down the bus driver's right there and and, and they'll just turn around and be like shut up <laughs> or stop that you know so it just is easier not to mention you're further away from the bathroom um and you want to try to avoid being near or using that bathroom whenever possible so i just think the front of the bus you just win on so many different levels trust me on this one sit as front as close to the front of the bus as possible it will make your trip a lot smoother not to mention you also get off the bus quicker and when you get to a station if your luggage is coming off from under the bus you want to be one of the first people off the bus to claim your luggage it's super easy at a lot of these stations where there's 
couple different buses right there and the, and the couple different attendants throwing luggage off they're not always looking at people's uh baggage slips anyone can walk up take a bag walk off so you want to be one of the first people off to identify your bag take it and leave and now my final tip um super easy one have a ride waiting when you get to your destination you don't want to spend time milling around uh, a greyhound bus station trying to find a ride uh, so if possible uh, you know have a ride waiting this may be a little complicated because the bus will probably be late so you have to coordinate with them when you're actually going to be there um, this day and age is super easy uh, to have a uber or lyft you know come pick you up you don't have to like have that waiting but uh, me typically I already have it pulled up in the app and then as soon as i like get my bags and get in the station you know boom i hit it and the driver's usually there in a couple minutes uh the old days when you had to wait on a taxi you're standing outside taxi people milling around kind of dangerous uh but now i just stay in the station till i see my lyft pull up or my uber pull up typically uber um and then i just go outside so have some form of ride either waiting or coming you know pretty fairly soon it just you don't want to make it safely through your trip and then have something go down while you're waiting on some weird taxi cab driver. I don't even know why people take taxis anymore. I guess in some, some places there are no Uber, but you know. So just have a ride, family, friend, family member, somebody to come pick you up. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, especially if you're going to a new place uh, of waiting on the public transportation. There's been times when I did my research and I was like, oh, like in Orlando. I said, oh, the, 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 the bus is right outside the bus station. The local bus is right outside the bus station. I'll get off the bus. I'll hop on the, you know, the local bus, go to my hotel. When I got to Orlando, it was one of the like most ghetto uh, bus stations around. Um, I, people were just walking up, punching people in the face. I saw this. I was like, not waiting out there. I, th I think this was actually, it's a couple years ago. It was actually the station in the time when I downloaded Uber and used it. Because I was like, uh, no not using that local bus the taxi was being weird i was like i'm using this uber thing worked out great so you know don't don't bank on public transportation unless you have to i mean some places have nice subways right next to the ground bus station or you know the, the, the whatever some kind of some places have nice public transportation but just be aware that it might not be super nice it could be in the middle of the ghetto um so just have a ride waiting if possible anyway those are my 10 tips for riding the Greyhound bus alone. Um, if you have any tips to add, please leave in the comment box below. If you have any other Greyhound bus questions, um, comment box below. Uh, check out my other videos. I think I have like a hundred plus videos about the Greyhound bus. I know, I didn't realize I could make that many videos about Greyhound either. But anyway, you know, check out my other videos um, and I'll probably have answered the question you have in that video. If not, you can always hit me up on social media and that's usually it's easiest for me to get in contact with you if you send me a question on Instagram. A lot of people do that and I, I answer them hour or so. So check me out on social media, hit me up there if you have a question. I don't mind talking all day about Greyhound Bus. As you can tell, this video is almost like 20 minutes. Anyway, I'm Tim, the Frugal Travel Guru. Thanks for watching, talk to you later.